you're gonna die. Go too right, fast. I'm going. I'm taking I'm, three. I'm going for the St. Louis now. Oh no! <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> you get your two? <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the channel everyone, Thotgore here of course, and today we are going to take a look at two replays that were submitted. The first one we're taking a look at uh, was submitted by Orvis, Orvis400 we see. So, um, actually all these uh, guys that we have in the division today are members of NGA. We've got Orvis, uh, Pink Mitsubishi, and we have Tommy Boy PDX. Uh, Orvis and Pink are both in their Sharn Horses, and then we have Tommy in the Old Bliss. So this should prove to be an interesting game. Um, when uh, Orvis and I were discussing uh, the replay here and whatnot, uh, I threw out uh, Sharn Horse 2.0 or Shiny Horse 2.0 um, because this was a pretty great game. Now the only thing with both the replays today, unfortunately I don't have any um, screenshots at the end so we can take a look at you know, final results, but it was still some interesting gameplay. Anyway, Land of Fire. Now they have recently, or Wargaming as being they, <laughs> has recently changed Land of Fire. Um, and I think change it for the better as well. It uh, definitely is... It gives you more options when you're really in close, is what I find. And and before, you know, especially over there by C with the islands, um, maybe not being as broken up, and especially by B, not excuse me, and B not having very many islands to uh, to count on. It really opens up the possibilities, or sorry, different options for you when you do get in close and say you know crap is going down and you need somewhere, you need some cover, you need somewhere to hide, or just. Um, you need something to absorb some shots for you and you don't have anything around, right? So it provides those few extra options for you there, and that's why I sort of enjoy it as well. Uh, obviously, too, the, the map, I believe, has since been optimized since the, uh, the original version of it here, so that's fantastic as well. And yeah, we're just going to cruise over here to the west side of the map, see what is going on. Um, you know, not really looking to get into the fight too early here. And this is something that is actually really important. Um in in the game uh, as it is anyway is uh, you don't again you, you don't want to stay at the back don't stay at the back you're useless in the back but uh, you don't also want to just go charging in. Um, you will die right away, and you know, you no know, use to anyone. You do kind of want to play it safe at the beginning, right? And you do want to get in there. You do want to have people spotted. The enemy team, you know, gets uh, getting them spotted up uh, with your destroyers and whatnot. So you get a general sense of where they are going and where your team should go. Uh, now that being said, in random battles, there's always going to be uh, situations, right, where you generally know what caps are going to be try are going to be taken first. And on land of fire, it usually is going to be the A cap zone anyway. This is, uh, you know, more open for the larger ships, so they generally do prefer to fight over here. Um, that being said, C is usually where you have your um, destroyer battles, right? Um, and over there at C, if it is more of a traditional sort of way as the, of the uh, map to be played, um, it always is helpful to have a cruiser hanging around just to provide some sort of support for the destroyers. And I mean, that's what Tommy Boy is doing over there on the east side of the map. You can see him in there capping out the points, so that's fantastic. Over here in the west, we do have Orvis um, and Pink Mitsubishi, uh, you know, just fighting it out over here around A, seeing what they can do. Uh, you'll notice too on the mini-map, right? They're not too close to A, uh, but they're not staying in the back either, right? Slowly moving up here, pushing forward slowly. It's important that you do actually um, push up, you know, right? You, you don't want to allow the enemy to have too much space to actually maneuver, get in there, cap the point before you know it. They have the point more or less locked down, and there's not going to be a whole lot you can do to actually take it from them uh, without incurring a whole bunch of losses. <laughs> However, in this instance, where we do have C already capped, it does provide you the opportunity, keep in mind, uh, to abandon A, basically. You know, you can keep up the fight at A, but A suddenly doesn't become as important to capture. You know, B now makes sense, right? So you do want to be able to adapt um, on the battle, or like, you know, in the game as these things are happening. We've talked about before on the channel, right, just being so um, stubborn or... Um, committed to one plan you know that it it just all goes wrong and, you, and you're not reacting accordingly because it, it's a fluid game you need to uh, change things up as things progress right anyway anyway still kind of hanging out in and behind a we still do have C which is fantastic you can see the enemy is or sorry the allies are kind of getting into position now to put a little pressure on B um, but we do still have some enemies in and around B so B is still pretty dangerous uh, over here at a we do have a number of enemies who are you know providing a defense at uh, at a and you you can call it a defense or what you 
could also refer to it as in this instance, especially where, you know, people are just kind of keeping the enemies over here at A busy, is they're stalling the enemies. If the enemies, you know, go in there and cap A and then sit in A, well, that's fine then. Let them have A. Let them sit there. You, In the meantime, you can go and take the other caps, right? And at the end of the day, just having one cap isn't going to be enough to actually win the battle. The enemies will eventually have to, you know, storm out of A and try and take B would be the most logical choice. Um, and then you have to really put up some sort of defense to prevent them from doing that. And hopefully the enemy won't be organized and they'll come out one ship at a time, in which case it's pretty easy to actually focus <laughs> those ships down, uh, get some good fires burning on them anyway. Especially in the Sharn Horse. I mean, this thing, oh, I love this ship at Tier 7. Um, I did actually just purchase the uh, the guys now. I got the guys now yesterday. Uh, she's fully stock, and I expected some terrible things from her being stock. But I was pleasantly surprised, actually. I, I mean, the dispersion on the guns, yes, the dispersion on the guns isn't so great. Uh, my commander isn't trained on her, so the, the turrets don't turn as fast as I might want them to. Um, but when the guns do hit... It is pretty amazing, and even to have a stock speed of 30 kilometers, or sorry, 30 knots in a uh, battleship. I know it's a, really more of a battle cruiser, but in the game as it ha as it is now, battleship is listed. <clears throat> that is amazing, amazing. <laughs> so it is really, really something else. I'm, I'm enjoying it quite uh, quite a lot. I did end up selling the Bayern. Not that I don't enjoy the Bayern, um, but I just wasn't my place to. I will actually take a look at the Bayern in uh, some upcoming videos. Um, but for now, Bayern is gone. Guys now is in and um, played a few battles in it. And I probably am going to end up keeping the guys now. <laughs> It's just so great. Anyway, anyway, more enemies are starting to pop up here on the minimap. You can see that they have, or they are attempting to make their push out of A, right? Um, they've finally realized, or at least there's enough enemy ships there now that they feel comfortable that they're going to attempt a push out of A here. Um, see what they can get done, and hopefully, you know, ideally cap that B point. B still isn't captured as of yet. However, uh, Orvis and his team, you know, they are in the lead just in terms of ships gone, so that's fantastic. The poor York, the poor York. If you were watching the York, this is the second time that Orvis knocked out the engines on the York, and the York obviously cannot repair it anymore. It, it, it's not working out too well for this player. <laughs> but anyway, we're moving in closer, right? Slowly moving in closer, and we do see a lot of enemy ships starting to pop up. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that both the guys now and the Scharnhorst have torpedoes. This is important. <laughs> Much like the Tirpitz, you want to limit how close you actually get to a German battleship because of the Tirpitz, or sorry, because of the torpedoes. Now, when you do get to Tier 8 and uh, in the Bismarck, and if you do fully spec out your Bismarck captain uh, with all the module upgrades and whatnot for secondary batteries, people will get destroyed by your secondaries uh, quite easily. You don't have torpedoes, but you have amazing secondaries. Anyway, we have this enemy destroyer who pops up. It's a Benson, I believe, pops up really close, huge threat, right? So immediately, we're going to fire our guns off, which is great. Then we're going to line up our torpedo launchers as well, right? Uh, something you do want to keep in mind, you know, when you're lining up your torpedoes, you're not firing your main gun. So the ideal point to line up your torpedoes is when your main guns are reloading. We do take a few torpedo hits here, so, you know, not too bad, but we have torpedoes on the way. There we go. One hits the Benson. Benson is gone. And in that brief time, too, we got 13 uh, main, or er, 13 secondary battery hits, which is pretty great. Um, we do have smoke behind us, though, so, you know, not 100% sure. There could be some more enemies there in the smoke. Uh, the enemies are really making their push out of A at this point in time, right? They're really trying to get out and take that B point. They want it, and, I mean, they need it. Um, they haven't managed to kill anyone on Orvis's team as of yet, uh, so they need to have that second point to start gaining more points than what, you know, Orvis's team is doing just in the one zone and killing enemy ships. Gaining some distance now, putting some distance between ourselves and the enemy. We still do have the smoke cloud behind us, but there hasn't been any enemies who've really popped out of the smoke cloud. So this is pretty great. But if we do look at the minimap, we do note that there are, you know, at least three enemy battleships that we see. And we can see the cyclone warning. Yes, we have a cyclone. Um, we're already actually feeling the effects of the cyclone. We can see the rain start coming in. Um, and you know that you're feeling the effects of the cyclone, obviously, not only because of the indicator, but just, you know, look at your minimap. You can see that your uh, view range is severely decreased. Now, the cyclone... Cyclones are interesting. I actually enjoy cyclones. I like having this randomness thrown into it because a cyclone can do 
um, some really, really good things for you. Mainly, it's, it can conceal you to get really close in to the enemies. And if you have a ship that excels in close in combat, these cyclones are actually should be your best friend. Um, you can get right in there and really unleash some damage. And uh, that's what we're about to see um, as we, you know, we can see that Orvis is turning his ship getting back into the fight, right? And this is exactly what he's doing, using the Cyclone as cover. Other people, you know, they don't enjoy the Cyclone because um, it limits their view range and all that, but no, I, I see the Cyclone as being great, uh, mostly because it does actually force you to get in there and fight. If you're way in the back sniping and a Cyclone comes in, yeah, you're going to hate it because now you can't see anything and you actually have to move forward and fight. <laughs> Anyway, we have an enemy destroyer here popping up and we are going to try and get rid of this enemy destroyer. Again, with the cyclone in effect here, you know, if this enemy destroyer is firing torpedoes, we're not going to see them um, maybe until it's too late. Luckily though, we do start seeing uh, torpedoes coming in, right? We can see the, I believe it's a Fab Fubuki, because it's three spreads of three, so there's one of the spreads. We can see that the Fubuki is actually trying to uh, stagger these spreads, right, and allow the maneuver, maybe uh, then fire a corrective shot. Unfortunately for our Turpets, uh, wasn't so lucky. Wasn't able to avoid those torpedoes as gracefully as Orvis was able to pull off. Uh, more shots go into the Fubuki. Almost killed this player. A um, few more hits. Hopefully from the secondary batteries and we'll be able to get this guy gone. We have a Turpets and a Guys now, I believe, who have just popped up. The Fubuki is now dead. Got the secondary battery kill. Fantastic. Turn bow in to these enemies, which is incredibly important. And we're actually loading up some armor piercing right now. Now the importance of going bow in, obviously you're going to mitigate any damage, but with the Sharnhorst and the fact that she has torpedoes, you're going to easily be able to fire off your torpedo spreads from port and starboard. Here come the torpedo spread from the Turpets, one spread of four, so we are able to dodge that, fantastic. Armor piercing is loaded up, shots go into the Turpets, 17,000 damage against that Turpets. <laughs> line up our, torpedo, our torpedoes, fire them away, get some torpedoes ready for the guys now here, line up quickly and fire away. So hopefully we're going to be able to take down these two players here. Again, torpedoes on the way for the Turpets and the guys now. We get one tor uh, torpedo hit on the guys now, more torpedo hits on the Turpets, Turpets goes down, guys now goes down. <laughs> and that's a nice double kill for Orvis. Fantastic. And I think too it was another um, close quarters expert. So two close quarter quarters experts in one game. Now it's not over, over here for Orvis. I mean it is over in terms of the battle, right? Orvis' team is going to win this, but we do have torpedoes coming in from enemy torpedo bombers and we are able to skillfully dodge these torpedoes. Thankfully too, because take a look at our health, right? We don't have a whole lot of health remaining, um, but man quick quick combat and that's exactly what the um, uh, the cyclone can provide it is amazing uh, some improvements to the cyclone that I think are warranted um, and I there was a survey going around that wargaming did and I you know passed on the comments um, but I do believe that if while you're in the cyclone if we could maybe just get a little more rough seas that would be pretty fantastic um, also the howling wind effect. I don't really feel the howling wind effect, right? We see some rain floating around and whatnot, but it's it doesn't just it doesn't seem very intense. Uh, maybe if the rain was going horizontally, that might change it. Who knows? Anyway, we do still have the cyclone effect, right? So we're, our view range is limited. There's only one enemy ship remaining. It's the enemy aircraft carrier. Uh, in the meantime, our teammates have cap B. We just capped A, so we've got all three locked down. So this is fantastic. Um, battle is basically over. We have some shots. Um, rather, we can finally see the enemy aircraft carrier. So we'll just get some shots into the enemy aircraft carrier and see what we can do. Rack up a bit more damage with the last citadel. And there we go. Battle ended with a victory and much much uh, money to be made there as well. So moving into the next clip we have another NGA member here, uh, Repulse, in the Kiev. The Kiev is a amazing destroyer tier 7. Uh, it's a Russian you know destroyer. It really really is great in terms of um, just its maneuverability and the guns on this ship is amazing. I was gonna say flexibility there but you know the torpedoes don't necessarily lend themselves to be too flexible but what the torpedoes do offer on the Kiev is an amazing chance to set up really good ambushes, and that's what we're going to see in this battle. Um, and it works out really, really well for Repulse here as well. Um, in terms of like the guns on the Kiev, it is also great that you know both, or well, the majority, two thirds of the firepower is located on the bow of the ship. Um, if you were running full speed 
in the Kiev with boost on as well, it's really hard for people to actually land any shots from you at any you know great distance. So the Kiev really does lend herself to either extremely close combat or mid-range combat where you're firing in on your guns, uh, sort of harassing the enemy and trying to set fires, right? Just doing that damage over time. Uh, your guns themselves when you're firing against um, battleships, for example, you know, you're not going to, you can't expect to do too much damage when those shells actually land, but what you can expect are fires and for the fire damage to really quickly add up as well. Um, and that's something that is, um, you know, consistent with the Russian destroyers and the Russian crew cruiser line as well. Um, just being able to continuously set fires, it, it is pretty, pretty great. Anyway, we are on Estuary, and Estuary is actually one of my more favorite maps, and it's because of the way that the islands are positioned in the center of the map, right? You don't notice it, I guess, too much when you are on this standard battle mode that we're on now, but when you're on domination, it really becomes apparent that the middle is actually critical in this map, because from the middle, you can go to the north, the south, the east, or the west relatively quickly. Um, now, if you're in a cruiser, uh, you know, a fast cruiser or a destroyer, um, that may not be sound as important to those captains however for a slow battleship captain this is something that can really really be exploited and really turn to your advantage especially if you happen to have some amazing secondary armament much like the german battleships anyway we have this unfortunate uh, kamikaze r who was popped up here in front of uh, repulse and repulse is quick to uh, just put this kamikaze r completely out of his misery repulse gets the kill and first blood on that one as well so fantastic get ourselves more money flags Turning back in, right, we're going to continue to go into the center. And again, because the center is usually, you know, fairly important on this map, you can expect to have a lot of destroyers going into the center at the beginning um, of the battle. And usually, if a destroyer, you know, if the destroyer force can control the center of the battle, they play a very significant role in the battle indeed. Um, because from the center, you know, not only can you rush the enemy base and start capping it out if the enemy have all left the, their base, uh, you can go at the enemy aircraft carrier if it's feasible. More importantly, and again, what we're going to see from Repulse today is setting up really really fantastic ambushes on the enemies <laughs> so we do note enemy ships right there we go second enemy destroyer has popped up it is a mitsuki so we only have to worry about two spreads of three torpedoes on this guy the guns on the mitsuki are pretty lackluster there we go another enemy destroyer pops up this time we've got a sim so we're immediately going to fire off all of our torpedoes in a wide spread uh, the Kiev has two torpedo launchers, five torpedoes each that go, I think it's four kilometers, but they are incredibly fast. We get one torpedo hit there, two torpedo, or yeah, one torpedo hit on the Sims. We do get the kill there on the Sims as well, which is fantastic. It looks like the kill, uh, the Sims flooded out. Now we just have the uh, Mitsuki to deal with here, and the Mitsuki, once again, not too big of a threat other than the torpedoes. We don't know where the, Fubu or where the Mitsuki is on the reload of the torpedoes, and here they come now. We can see that we're in a reverse and at this point I was cringing while I was watching the replay. What saved Repulse here is that I think he grounded himself and was able to quickly come to a stop and then bring his ship forward and again really does illustrate the, the just the quickness and the power of the Kiev uh, engines right to propel this ship through the water at amazing speeds. We're on about half health now um, but not too bad right we're already up to three kills uh, we basically killed uh, well, we you know we killed the majority of their destroyer force. The enemy only has one more destroyer remaining, so that's pretty decent. And we see a lot of battleships um, and you know other ships hanging out over here around this sort of area of the map, right? <clears throat> So this, another excellent opportunity to start setting up an ambush. Um, you don't, because of the, you know, the spotting distance or uh, the concealment, uh, yeah, the concealment range of the Kiev, you don't necessarily want to just charge out there. <laughs> They will spot you immediately, and right, they probably have their guns pointed in this direction, waiting for your allied ships. We can see them over there coming around the same uh, sort of little bend, so you don't necessarily want to do that. But what you do want to do is take note of where the enemy is going, right? Who is doing what here? We can see that we are focused on one enemy ship who's actually moving away. We can see an enemy Bayern, though coming around making a move here and we have our smoke available so we pop our smoke we're going to get ourselves into position start slowing down again that magic number i think is about 9.2 knots where the uh, the smoke will actually envelop in front of your destroyer in front of your ship which is great fire off 
all of our torpedo launchers. Uh, because we're in smoke, we're completely hidden, and the Bayern captain doesn't have a whole lot of options right now. <laughs> We've got two full spreads of torpedoes on the way in for the Bayern. Torpedoes start hitting. Uh, we get, what is that, six torpedo hits in total. Get the kill. Devastating strike as well. So now we're up to four kills. About 82,000 damage as well. So this is pretty damn decent. We have this enemy, Miyoko, so we can see that Repulse is quick to unload the HE, load up the armor piercing. Um, at these distances and ranges, you do definitely have a chance of getting a Citadel hit on a cruiser like that, especially when the cruiser is giving you the broadside. Um, so our shots went in. Didn't get the Citadel on the Miyoko. Yoko, but whatever. We still did a bit of damage there. Our smoke is still up, so we're going to stay in the smoke and, and, you know, take a look around, see what is going on. Um, we haven't, we're at least, you know, so far in the battle, it's been pretty intense, and I haven't looked at the minimap, so glancing at the minimap, we do see that over there on the west, our allies aren't doing that bad of a job. One thing I forgot to mention up until this point right now as well, very important to mention, we also have Dorge in battle. Forgot about that. Sorry, Dorge. Anyway, we've got Dorge in battle. We managed to dodge the incoming torpedoes, which is fantastic. That was probably from the enemy Miyoko, although not 100% sure on that one. And our smoke is still up, so we're still going to stay in the smoke. But again, over on the west side, you can see our allies are actually pushing up, and it looks to be going pretty decently as well. Our smoke is gone, but we still have the landmass to keep us cover. We do see the Miyoko coming in once again. Um, we're going to start lining up some shots on the Miyoko and hopefully be able to do a bit of damage, um, maybe get a citadel and take the player down. So our first shot saw Salvo goes in as HE, second salvo goes in HE as well, because of the angle of the Miyoko here, right, the armor piercing is not going to be too feasible, so we're just going to keep pumping in the um, HE into this guy, and hopefully set some fires, uh, we do also have allies in and behind us, right, so they can also do some uh, damage potentially here as well. If we look at the minimap and we look behind us where we are right now, we do see an allied cruiser, and I believe it's an allied battleship duking it out um, behind us, so this is going to be important to note, because we don't, um, we don't, well, there we go. The allied battle, or sorry, the enemy battleship did just take out um, our allied ship. So that kind of sucks. We are going to have to turn and potentially deal with this player. We are spotted now as well, and we're putting shots into the enemy Miyoko. Unfortunately, we end up grounding ourselves, uh, but more shots go into the Miyoko, and the Miyoko is almost dead. If we can just land this uh, few last shots here, we'll also get ourselves a Kraken. So that's not going to be too bad at all. A few more shots go in. There we go. Repulse gets his fifth kill, manages the Kraken, and uh, now we're going to take a look around see what else we have to deal with we can see an enemy uh, i think it's a sharnhorst coming at us right coming through the channel through the center of the map here again excellent opportunity for a ambush because the sharnhorst is you know sticking close to the mountain and if we stick close to the mountain like we are now we can really get in here close and the sharnhorst won't see us till the last minute we are in really low health sharnhorst has some pretty great secondary so we do need to be careful while we're doing this um, but at the end of the day, I mean, take a look at the overall results too. If we can pull this off, this will probably be victory. So there we go. We do end up dying, but again, two full spreads of torpedoes. There's no way that the Sharon Horse is going to be able to avoid that. We get the kill, get its butt a flesh wound, and yeah, that is our sixth kill. Fantastic. <laughs> the enemies only have 50 points remaining. So obviously, uh, they are not going to be able to uh, win this battle. Two ships as well, right? So battle is basically over, and we've won. Again, I don't have any screenshots, unfortunately. But still, some really good battles that we took a look today on um, Land of Fire and here on Estuary, and emphasizing to the point of um, you know the middle here on Estuary. And it's fairly important. Uh, you do want to make sure that you have some sort of presence there. Um, ideally, anyway, right? Um, especially in these random battles where we've got 12v12, it can make for some interesting situations. Anyway, folks, anyway, that is today's video. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much to uh, Orvis and Repulse for sending in the replays. Again, you guys have replays. Please do send them in as well. Um, I, I'll do my best to get them up on the channel. Um, but as always, you know, leave any comments you have for me in the video comment section below. Love reading those and responding back to them. Hit the old like button if you did like today's video. Hit subscribe if you were not a subscriber. And as always, I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day.